Hi, my name is Felix Predan and I work since 2015 uh, in the research on highly efficient solar cells based on 3.5 semiconductors. One major goal of me and my colleagues at Fraunhofer ESA is to expand the efficiency boundaries for the solar energy conversion, a goal we share with several research groups worldwide. The current world record of 47.1% under concentration was achieved by our colleagues at the Enril in the USA. Now, in the context of the 50% project, we want to break that record again and furthermore tackle the uh, big milestone of 50% conversion efficiency. Such high efficiencies become generally possible uh, in so-called multi-junction solar cells, where uh, uh, solar cells with decreasing band gap are stacked on top of each other. And these individual solar cells can efficiently absorb different parts of the broadband solar spectrum. The challenge in this context is to combine the solar cells in such a way that a high material quality can be maintained. And in the 50% project, uh, uh, we perform the direct wave bonding after argon beam surface activation as a solution. Here we realize first uh, the uh, top solar cells on a gallium arsenide waiver and then bond this waiver onto the bottom solar cells that are realized on a separate indium phosphide substrate. And then in the end we just have to remove the gallium arsenide substrate and the overall solar cell structure is realized. The waiver bonding itself is carried out here in this machine in this clean room environment. Here we have an SAB. 100 uh, wafer bonder by the company IUV. The general bonding process is relatively simple. So first of all, we mount the wafers here in this um, vacuum chamber, an ultra high vacuum. And here we sputter the wafer surfaces with high energetic uh, argon projectiles to activate the surfaces. Here the uh, surface oxides and contaminations are removed and as a result, dangling semiconductor bonds remain on the surface. And now when we press the wafers together, these dangling forms can form atomic bonds and like that, the wafers are permanently combined. For multi-junction solar cells, such a wafer bond has to fulfill uh, three major characteristics. So first of all, it has to be optically uh, transparent, mechanically stable, and also highly electrical conductive. The optical transparency is directly achieved as we are not using any intermediate layers that could be absorbing in this bonding process. For the mechanical stability, it's mainly important that the wafer surfaces are very flat and that there are quasi no particles on the wafers which prevent a close contact of the wafer surfaces. On the one hand, this is mainly achieved by chemical mechanical polishing we perform prior to the bonding. And on the other hand, it's important that we are here in this clean room environment to ensure that there are no particles coming to the wafers in the moment we are mounting the wafers into the machine. And like that, we achieve fully bonded four inch uh, wafer pairs, as we can see here in this image uh, um, taken by scanning acoustic microscopy. And here the white dots, um, other areas which are not bonded. And as an example, we see one uh, white dot here in the top, which comes uh, mainly from a particle. The main research focus uh, on the, for the wave bonding, however, is to minimize the resulting bond resistance. And um, so the multi-junction solar cells are operated on a concentration at very high current densities. And here already, um, um, uh, relatively uh, small bond resistance lead to significant voltage losses. And here we are trying to optimize the process parameters of the wafer bonding itself, as well as the materials that are bonded on each other, the so-called uh, bond layers. And like that, we uh, already achieved in this project uh, bond resistance of four milliohm square centimeter with the n gallium indium arsenide phosphide and indium phosphide junction. This is one of the lowest values that has been uh, achieved for the direct wafer bonding so far and already does not limit significantly the achievable efficiency in the solar cell in the end. However, a few millivolts are still lost at the bond interface and so we're uh, still 
further uh, try to further optimize the form to gain these last few millivolts and realize the highest efficiency as possible in the end. And if you want to uh, keep updated on our progress on achieving your record efficiencies up to 50%, please visit our website and uh, keep updated. Goodbye.